Did you hear how epic that sounded? Hey there my people, welcome to episode 52 of Mrs. Enough Nabao and I know I am lying again because I was lucky enough to catch the European premiere of Death Note the Musical in concert here in London so I do know things about the show now <laughs> but I just had to do a video on it. It was such a great surprise especially considering it's an adaptation because you know, not gonna point any fingers, but it's not easy to find good ones. So today I will be revisiting the songs for the first time, as well as commenting on the show itself and how it translates to the stage. I have watched the anime, so I'm probably gonna do some comparisons as well. If you don't have any context on Death Note, I'm gonna be explaining things as we go along. So it should be relatively safe for you to watch this and understand most of what's going on. Because, <laughs> you know, even I don't sometimes. <laughs> and let's say you get to the end of this video and you're like, not bad, not bad. Then you should definitely subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of the not bad future content. And if you want to support the channel beyond the YouTube realm and get some extra content from time to time, check out my Patreon, link in the description. Lyrics up and let's take some deadly notes. <laughs> Actually, let's not do that. Ah, oh, I have to start with how much I love how ominous most of it sounds, especially L songs. Oh god, I forgot that. Give me a Neary sounding show any day. Did you hear how epic that sounded? The only thing I don't understand is why they wouldn't make this overture 40 seconds. Missed opportunity. And for context, 40 seconds is how long it takes for someone to die once their names have been written down on the death note. I'll give those of you who are not familiar more specifics about the plot as we go along and figure it out with the lyrics. Where is the justice when the guilty all go free? <laughs> Wait a second. Why don't we throw away is this Jeremy Jordan? Why am I fever dreaming? <laughs> it is Jeremy Jordan, isn't it? With your noble compromise. Show me what's right about the Ooh. Listen to that guitar line. And then the drums before the beat hits. I mean, uh, it's kind of right. Jeremy Jordan playing light is not something I would have predicted. Not in my wildest dreams. <laughs> I'm not mad though. <laughs> Ooh. That rhythm guitar makes me irrationally energetic. It's like Red Bull for the soul. <laughs> And that is why this anime remains relevant and will continue to be so. Besides exploring these familiar themes in a very innovative and even culturally rooted way, the idea of law and justice in the West is quite different from how they perceive it in the east besides you know you have the addition of shinigamis or gods of death in the japanese culture so it's the fact that you know we still let the rich get away with murder sort of encompasses how relevant so many of the themes in this anime still are and in many cases unfortunately will continue to be oh listen to that guitar baby i mean we literally have the heavy metal band structure right with one lead guitar for solos and one rhythm guitar making the melody. Rock and roll, baby! <laughs> so good. Where is? Yeah, I remember this really well. Oh, the music in this. Yes! This song takes place at the school where a teacher is debating about law and justice with 
his students. I don't know if it was intentional or not, but most of their uniforms, and when I think about it, most of the costumes were in terms of grey or black and white, as were many of the other elements on stage. And it's very clear how they parted ways with some of the visual elements in the anime and made the stage show more monochrome, which combined with some of the square shapes that they use in the stage design, resembled the black and white pages of a manga in the shapes and colors. And that really helped the show look like a proper unit. Very cohesive. Besides being an amazing way to translate and reference the original material onto the stage. Amazing work. I also really like how this opening is not your usual welcome to the village song or the flashy number. It doesn't worry about introducing any of the other characters or give you more context on what's to come in the plot. It's all about setting up the main character's mindset and consequently giving the audience an idea of how they can expect him to behave. You know, once he finds the notebook and gains the power of bringing death to those whose names he writes down on the pages. And that to me is the perfect start to a story that leans heavily on the psychological and moral aspects of the situation they're in. Where this high school student has been making justice with his own hands by using the death note to kill those he deems as criminals. Very refreshing take, pretty juicy stuff. Oh, this is Ryuk's song. Ryuk is the god of death who drops their note, the death note for a human to find it. It has surprisingly a very Disney villain feel to it. Almost comical, actually. Which makes sense. Ryuk's pretty funny on the show. And that is Rem, another god of death, who also gives their notebook to a human. See, it's that circus-like melody that makes it sound very Disney-y. Woo! Who they are is who they will, they will always be. Can I just say there's something that really surprised me about the show? And it was the slightly pessimistic quality to it. Of course the gods of death will have no sympathy or hope for humans. And Light, the main character, the human who gets Ryuk's notebook, sort of ends up proving them right in their point of who they are is what they will always be. You just know you won't end well for like from the start. And the gods of death know that too. I thought it was very bold of them to actually lean on some of the more pessimistic ideas like that one. So they didn't try to make anything lighter, no pun intended, for the stage and I really appreciate that. Maybe death can release something more than we should. I really don't know and don't care. <laughs> Ryuk is a mood. <laughs> nice. You know, Amy Atkinson was so unbelievably good as Rem. I mean, the whole cast was just... <laughs> Famous last words. <laughs> Like seriously though, anyone would make at least one kill, just out of curiosity whether it works or not. Not just me, right? <laughs> I'm not super on board with the whole hurricane thing though. Makes no sense to me. I mean, it does make, make sense, but it's just so simplistic. Or am I forgetting something about the anime that would make this metaphor less cheap? Yes! I mean, come on, that's so cheesy. In all their sins blown away, someone stop this metaphor for Christ's sake. <laughs> Go off, like, or go on. Wait, what? <laughs> All of Ryuk's songs are very Disney, actually, which is funny to me. And all I am is always bored. Kira, Kira, Kira is how light becomes known by people who don't know who he actually is. 
you know, I'm very glad they decided to go with full costumes for the Shinigamis instead of stripping the production down like they usually do for concerts. I think if they were not in full costume, it wouldn't have had the same impact in distancing them from the humans. There really isn't very much to do. So now and then I really love how bored he is with death and how that ties into how easy it is to die in this story. <laughs> it's really life that catches his attention when he needs something to do because that's the part that means something, right? Death is just boring. Kira! Kira! I'm actually quite impressed with how close the actor in the concert sounded to this guy. Kira! I love Ryuk. Oh look, now there's an apple. <laughs> Ryuk loves apples, by the way, <laughs> just for context. My favorite thing about this song is how it ends because it reinforces that idea that Ryuk really does not care. He doesn't have any connection to these humans like Rem ends up having. And I really enjoy that. I really like how they explored both sides, like one Shinigami who is literally just doing his job and one who gets too attached to humans, I mean. And Ryuki might show some little interest in Light or Kira, but ultimately he's having his fun and doing his job because he knows how this is going to end anyway. So one second he's like, ooh, look at the fuss that guy's causing. And the very next he's like, yay, Apple! <laughs> Or maybe he just has ADHD, right? Relatable God. <laughs> oh no, this is Misa's song. Nothing against Misa, it's just so tacky. <laughs> I still don't love it though. <laughs> You know, the thing with Misa in the show, they chose to focus on her obsession over Kira rather than the dark side of her character. She is one of the darkest characters in there. And that's a bit of a shame. We do learn about her parents' murder in the show very quickly, so we get justification for why she glorifies Kira. Then we also have the scene where she asks Rem to end her life once she's captured for helping Kira. But besides that, it's mostly about her being obsessed with him, to the point she's willing to jeopardize her own life. Her naivety and trust go a little bit too far for me. Also, she's one of the very few comic reliefs in the anime, which is not true for the stage show at all. So I think her character could use with some work in the musical. I really like her voice. Who is this? <laughs> oh my god, I forgot about this. <laughs> yeah, I really don't love this one, but it's true to the character, I guess. She is this big pop star, and it sounds very much like a big pop star song, so... Right, I think we get it by now, she's ready. <laughs> Oh yeah, I was like, what is this song? It's the one his sister sings. It's cute. Also not my favorite, but cute. As if he needed any more encouragement to feel like a hero, huh? That line is so weird to me. We all need a hero and someone he can save. So we do need the criminals as well, right? <laughs> Without them, we wouldn't have anyone to save. It kind of ruins the whole point that light makes. <laughs> I'll be honest, I, I'm not sure we even needed his sister in the show. She doesn't really drive him to do anything or inspires him. Let's be honest, he already thinks he's a hero. Nothing happens to her or for her or because of her. She doesn't really add anything. So I do believe they could have left her out. Even though she's cute, there's no purpose. Oh darling, if only you knew. <laughs> yeah, sounds cute, but do we need it? I'll leave you to ponder on that one. Ah, finally! Elle is here. His songs were definitely my favorites. And the actor playing him in the show was perfect. By the way, Elle is the guy who is hired to find out who Kira is. 
So there's this antagonism between the two of them the whole time. Mistake. The game begins the same way. I, look I love how this barely any change to the melody once we hit the chorus, mirroring else concentration and composure. And then Ah, oh, so freaking cool. Yeah, I'm not crazy about the lyrics in this rhymes, but the music the game begins the same way. Now imagine a bunch of green beams of light dancing around him in the audience. The background darkened. Man, I need a full production of the show. Game B. Let's go! Ah, oh, I love that song. It's very suspenseful and chilling. And because it stays on that same pace and that consistent melody until that big change it really helps you get in l's mind space and rhythm quite literally it sort of eases you into his thinking process like he's slowly guiding you so you're ready when that big shift happens in the melody because it means it's a shift in his mind as well brilliant i'm sorry can you hear that ah oh. Excuse me! Honestly, Teenage Barbara is vibing so hard with this. I do remember this one though. Oh, is this his father's song? Oh yes, it is! See, I don't mind the lyrics of this one so much. It's one of the best in the show, if you ask me, lyric-wise. Nice. Oh yeah, this is just after L actually lets a man die in his place because Light thinks that that man is L. And because L is after Light, Light ends up killing that man. And then L comes out going, surprise, it wasn't me. So that's why Light's father is going, you don't kill a man as a substitute or to just get a clue. And this is a scene that shows us how Light and L are actually very similar. They both have very strong beliefs and they will stick to it no matter who dies. Maybe by working with you, helping you will be ah. Liar, liar, pants on fire. Light tries to go work with his father because his father worked for the police to try and find out more stuff about L. Come on, babies! You know, the violin slash drum combination here was the absolute correct choice. Give them a raise. All of the data has been analyzed. What other data does he have to see? Oof. Listen to how suspenseful that sounds, which is such a great pairing with how on the edge L makes you feel most of the time while watching the anime and the stage show as well. He's a very mysterious character, but there's something quite creepy about him as well. He's an unconventional person, so you never really know what he's thinking or what his reaction will be because most of the time he's just so calm and collected but you learn that he's also extremely smart so he seems like a very threatening character even though there's quite a lot of comic relief as well because he's always like eating sweets and drinking tea and that contrast is just creepy as hell his songs on the show reflect that really well his methods lack a moral code. I know you can only explore so much with a musical, but the dissonance between how the police works and how L works is so interesting. Especially that they hire this guy who is very similar to Light to actually catch him. Ah, <laughs> I love how morally great this is. And both Light and L are. And how this is that established 
from the very start and ends up creating a connection between the two of them. That's why you can't ever find absolutes in the show. There's no black and white. There's no hero, there's no villain, there's only this itch every time you try to fit a character into either of those boxes because they never properly fit. Everyone is both at the same time. <laughs> Nice! Death Note is so freaking dramatic, there is no way it wouldn't work in a theater. <laughs> Actually, anime in general tends to be very intense, right? I think they should adapt more animes to the stage. <laughs> One is not... Yeah, I love how this song represents their dynamics so well. They're very similar people, but also quite different, mostly in their purpose here, their goal. So they play with that, having them singing either together or separately, having their voices harmonize or clash. That is really cool. Oh, I don't remember this, or do I? Is this Rem? Oh, yes, I do remember this. Her voice is delicious. Oh, yeah, yeah. Amy Atkinson displayed some unbelievable vocals in this song at the concert. Unbelievable. I'm not a big ballad fan, but quite like this one, especially the chorus with the, the notes going up. I think the orchestration was slightly different in the concert though. I don't remember that folk-like opening. I like how ambiguous the show makes Rem. It's not clear if she loves Misa, if she pities her, if she envies her complete devotion, or if it's a combination of all of that. This song has a subtle traditional sound on the background, doesn't it? It's very clear with the opening, but there is something like a flute throughout, throughout the whole thing that makes it sound quite folk. Such a great mirror of the multiple dualities in this story, for love makes you happy but also wary and afraid, law and justice, good and bad, hero and villain, mortals and mortals, love believers and non-believers. There's quite a lot to play with and that's what makes the show so interesting. Oh, there's the the flute if it is a flute that is <laughs> i really like how mellow this sounds but still with a pinch of suspense in there even when they're talking about love it's it feels very heavy full of fear and regret it's never pure the show is so dark i love it <laughs> he doesn't kill them with a knife or a gun but if you ask me here <laughs> I love this bit. I'm pretty sure that Kira is your son. <laughs> that was so funny. Live. The way Elle slowly turns to Light's dad, already knowing the reaction it would cause, telling him Kira is his son. Obsessed with this guitar. So let's get. Oh, yeah, this is the tennis match scene. And I was so glad they managed to include that in the concert. They are literally hitting an invisible ball throughout the song. It's super well rehearsed, making the, the racket movement in the right timing to match the sound of the ball that is not really there. They did a great job. And I'm pretty sure all the fans were very happy about it because it is a really iconic moment in the anime. Yes! Damn, damn, damn. Damn, damn, damn. 
Eyeball to eyeball, we'll see who blinks first. Let's get to it. Ugh. I really don't like that line. Misa makes me a bit uncomfortable, not gonna lie, with how submissive she is. I kind of like how many songs in the show end with the classic rock and roll drumming guitar beat finale, you know? The dan 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 or whatever. Wow, that was a very weird way to describe it. <laughs> oh no. I'll pass on Mrs. Sons. Thanks. Please don't hate me. <laughs> Take me, but make me give you half my ears. Girl, snow. Okay, she's obsessed with him, let's move on. <laughs> Seriously though, Rem is played by a woman in this because of the lack of female characters, right? Or the lack of good ones at least. Because like I said, there's not much to Misa in the show other than her devotion to Kira. Not even the humor is there. I'm assuming they made Rem a female to sort of like balance out the amount of male characters we have on that stage because it's a lot of men. <laughs> but yeah, curious to know why they made that choice. Again, there's something folk to that sound, isn't there? At least I like to think that they wanted to bring a bit of Japan into the music as well. That's that's a nice thought. My son is exactly who he seems to oh dear. I hope you're sitting down. <laughs> Am I blinded to what my son Yes, yes you are, sir. Could I stand the pain and lies If it's Kira that I find Behind lights I... No, but seriously, why do his father's songs have the best lyrics? <laughs> Sounds like someone had a favorite when they were writing this. Unfeeling monster Somehow raised by me Oof. On a bound to serve his family what a pickle you find yourself in, sir. Time to think and begin. What would I do if I got inside his head? Like him Wouldn't you like that though? Imagine the organized chaos in there. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yes to the music in this, honestly. About it, this could be a very creepy romantic song. <laughs> I mean, the, the, the lines are blurred anyway, aren't they? You know, the music in this feels very nostalgic to my 2000s alternative pop rock phase. And I actually just remembered that I was reading the program, waiting for the concert to start, and there's an interview with the composer where he says that he drew a lot of inspiration from the music that his son was listening to at the time. And that was the pop rock alternative bands from the 2000s, like Linkin Park. And that's exactly the period this music brings me back to. And I love it! Dun, dun, dun. My god, the sexual tension. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> this show has no right to sound this cool. I'm sorry. Wow. Rock and roll, baby! Wait, what is this one? You can tell me Oh, that's when Misa gets captured. I was like, man, this got weird really quickly. <laughs> Girl! That is a really cool line, given she gives away half of his life to be able to get Shinigami ice. 
So for those who don't know, is how she can see the names of people above their heads. So she doesn't need to find out their names so she can write them down on the notebook. And that's how she starts helping Light slash Kira. But that means that she gave the Shinigami half of her remaining life. Which is like, girl, just no. But anyway, it ties in well with the line, I'm living on borrow time because that's all she can do, right? She can only borrow because she doesn't really have a lot of it. This singer has a lower range than the one from the concert. And I like it because it's not super common for pop stars. I mean, we gotta give it to her though. She is very certain of what she wants. It's quite hardcore, really. Oof. That guitar in the end, ooh la la. Okay, this one I generally don't remember. No, I think they cut this one. Although I do remember Ram singing something after Misa asks her to kill her. Could have been this? I'm not sure. I don't love ballads. I just erased them from my memory. <laughs> Ram's theme is a bit repetitive throughout the show, isn't it? All she sings about is love. It's fair if that's her arc. To be fair, it is fair because, you know, she is a Shinigami, she's not supposed to fall in love with anyone, she's not supposed to care for humans, so the fact that she's so attached to the idea of love is not as boring as it would be if it was just like a normal human character because there is complication in the fact that she is a Shinigami, right? Kind of cute. She's so in love. <laughs> Aww. And even if I die, love will survive. So cheesy. Wow. Power ballad. Sounds very different from the rest of the show. Wow. Yeah, I actually do not remember this at all. <laughs> I'm sitting down and pouring tea as if I do it every day Go through the motions and Aww, the I like it This picturing of a sense of normality right before everything goes mental As if I'm acting in a play So out of character cool. yet somehow not a shock Just bad code that keeps repeating you know, the references to codes, analysis, data in the lyrics feel a bit off to me because we never see L utilizing any instruments, tools, devices. He doesn't really use anything except for his mental capacity. So it comes off a bit superficial to keep mentioning that. As in, hey, I'm gonna tell you this guy knows how to do all of this cool tech stuff but we're never gonna show him do it okay you're gonna have to believe us he is a smart guy to be fair light is annoying Woo! Nice! That duets is so good. Woo! Woo! I know, right? How could you not see this coming? Let's go, L! Amazing vocals! So good, so good. L songs and their duets are definitely my favorites. Sleep now here among your choices is a savage line. Oh, that's so good. 
shades of grey. That takes me back to my comment about the monochrome choice of shades in this production. It would be pretty cool if they took inspiration from that line for the visual elements. Please tell me that's what happened. Oh yes! I love that little pause. Old as the word goodbye. That's a damn weird line to finish a show with. <laughs> you know, that last line, old as the word goodbye, doesn't really tie into anything else, so it doesn't feel like closure really. <laughs> but the vocals were phenomenal, so I'll cut them some slack. And to be fair, just the fact that they chose to end with a requiem, which is by definition either a net of remembrance or that mass that Catholic people attend when someone dies to pray for their souls ties into the entire show, right? So I guess it's fine. Old as the word goodbye, what? <laughs> I've said this time and time again, but I'll say it once more. Death Note was one of the most refreshing pieces of theater I saw in the West End this year. It was a complete surprise to me, and it really made me wish for more producers who will take a chance on the unconventional, rather than just be guided by money. It's not a masterpiece by any means, I actually think the lyrics could use with a lot of rewriting. That's probably my main issue with it. And then there's the fact that I mentioned in my 60 second review that we don't have enough time time to establish some of the characters' relationships so they feel quite rushed and you have a hard time believing they're actually real. But the show is very aware that it's not a masterpiece and it embraces what it is proudly, which is a fun and pretty accurate adaptation that doesn't really try to please the traditions of theatre. It does its own thing in order to be faithful to its original material. And that's where it goes right. Kudos to the writers and creatives for that. Did you enjoy this video? Then make sure to leave your like in your comments below and I'll see you next time to conquer the world of musical theatre. Keep singing. Ciao.